Hey, Group High, thanks so much for that nice introduction. Personally, I'm a big fan of Group High, my agency for super users. You know the drill, follow along, hashtag Outreach Marketing, and I'm at Danica Combo. So if you're here, chances are you have a cause, an issue, or a nonprofit, and you thought, I'd like to get those influencers, you know, those super noisy people on social media, many of them bloggers, I'd like to get them to talk about my issue or my cause. And if you think about it, good idea, because many bloggers built their sites because they have a point of view. They have something to say. And the voice they use is not just their blog. They're using their platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, in robust ways. So the question becomes, how do you rally influencers? How do you get them as excited about what you're excited about? And right now, Everybody's thinking about the ice bucket challenge, right? But I'm warning you, don't try to be a copycat. Any attempt at imitation will be obvious. And the ice bucket challenge really was lightning in a bottle. But that say, there is a takeaway from the ice bucket tech challenge. And I just wrote a blog post about it. But the ice bucket challenge was super, super shareable because very little about it was about ALS the cause itself. It was really about a bunch of people doing silly things on Facebook, pouring buckets of ice on their head. So I digress because I'm here to talk to you about how do you rally bloggers around your cause, but there's a takeaway there we're gonna come back to. So the question I want you to ask is to pose yourself with any campaign you're thinking about launching is, is this campaign shareable? So what do I mean by that? I mean, I know you care about your issue or your nonprofit or cause, but is it shareable in the way that you can really get people to put a bumper sticker on their car, to put a sign in their yard? Because ultimately, when you're reaching out to bloggers, you're saying to them, yeah, put a bumper sticker on your blog about my cause. So the question you have to ask is, would I naturally share this if I had no relationship with the issue or nonprofit or cause? Would I take the time to tweet it? So let me talk by example. So my good friends at Group High said that you, my audience, loves case studies, and I have a great case study for you. It's a campaign that ended up being super shareable and had amazing results. It's called the 100 Good Deeds Bracelet, and you see it there. It's a gorgeous bracelet, right? 100 beads strung around, and it comes in a lot of different colors. And the idea behind the bracelet is to get people to do good deeds, 100 good deeds, in fact. And you see where the arrow is pointed, there's a ring. Okay, so the 100 good deed bracelet is both a fashion statement and a cause. The idea is every time you do a good deed, you move that ring on the bracelet, that little ring I showed you, over one until you get to 100. There's only two rules of the good deed game. One, you should go out of your way to do it. So if you're helping an old lady walk across the street, that's not really a good deed because you were walking across the street anyway. And you shouldn't be super, super braggy about it. So fashion statement, cause, all in one bracelet. Cool, right? To make this bracelet even more amazing, it's designed by this extraordinary woman. Her name is Mary Fisher. Mary Fisher. Does that name ring a bell? It might, if you're old enough. Um, Mary Fisher, you see her there on the left, she, 1992, she stood up at the Republican National Convention and she said, I have AIDS. Now understand, in 1992, it was stunning. Nobody thought that somebody with blonde hair and blue eyes could have AIDS. And that speech that she gave, it's considered one of the greatest speeches of the 20th century, was really responsible for changing the way politicians thought about AIDS. So after that speech, there was a difference in the way that um, the politicians uh, paid attention to AIDS research and attention around the issue. So Mary, 1992, she survived. Incredible. Because back then, a diagnosis of AIDS was a death sentence. And here she is now, Mary. She's an artist, she's an activist, and She's a bracelet designer. It's Mary who designed these bracelets. And Mary goes around the world. Here she is in Rwanda in this picture. She goes around the world 
working with economically fragile women, many of them HIV positive. And she works in places like Uganda, South Africa, Zambia. I met her in Haiti. And so she's providing income for these women. And the making of the bracelet, it's actually more than just stringing the bead because this piece of the bracelet, it's this intricate woven thing that she does with them. And an ancient woven thing is super, super strong. So that's the story about the bracelet, right? So Mary came to us and asked us, would we do something about the bracelet? We thought, yeah, the bracelet is cool, but we knew we needed some hook. We knew we needed something to get bloggers and influencers to want to write about it. So we thought, since the whole idea of the bracelet is to do good deeds, what if we launched a movement around D to day? Hashtag D to day. And because timing and any good idea is everything, we decided to launch the movement around New Year's when everybody's setting their New Year's resolutions. And let's face it, most New Year's resolutions, what are they? Lose weight, go to the gym. What if we launched a movement where people set resolutions about doing good? With any good idea, it takes a village, right? So everywhere, agency, we have a community of bloggers, a network of bloggers. It's 1,600 amazing bloggers strong. But we thought, let's make it bigger than just us. So we reached out to our friends at our favorite blogging networks. We reached out to Clever Girls, Mom at Forward, Blogalicious, Latina Bloggers Connect, Type A Parent, One to One Network, Niche Parent. We said, hey, you want to join forces with us? And they said, heck yeah, we love it. But one thing we did is we didn't go to them with a fully baked idea. We went to them and we asked what they thought about it. So they were able to bring ideas and insert great ideas into the basic D2Day -day concept. So ultimately, we thought we had a pretty shareable concept. Um, we had a hunch that our friends in the blogosphere would find the notion of doing, doing good deeds shareable. Combined with New Year's, we figured we had a hit on our hands. So what we did was we created shareable graphics. More on that later, but as you can see with the graphics we created, they're as much about doing good deeds as they are about the bracelet. So we didn't create graphics that said, do good deeds, buy a bracelet. We really created graphics that people might naturally want to share about setting New Year's resolutions. And in there, the bracelet was simply and beautifully inserted. So critical to making anything shareable is to make it super, super easy. Remember, people don't want to go out of their way. You've got to make it so easy. So what we did was we created a toolkit. We put all those graphics in the toolkit and we housed it a couple of different places. One of our favorite places is Pitch Engine. So we housed all the graphics. We housed sample tweets, Facebook status updates in a place. And also we housed them in Google Docs where anybody could come and get them, okay? And we decided, let's make it a multi-tiered tactic. You know, don't limit your campaign idea to any one platform, right? So we said, some influencers like to write on Facebook and some are on Twitter. Let's provide them tools to speak wherever they want to speak, but let them do it as they want to. And the bloggers responded. They tweeted, they Facebook, they Instagram. They took our original content and they created their own content. One woman even made an incredible video, which is now housed on the 100 Good Deeds site. We even hosted a Twitter chat. Remember I mentioned that we had joined force, forces with Mom at Forward? Well, Jill Johnson Patti runs one of the most popular Twitter chats in the country. It's called Hashtag GNO. She devoted a GNO to the bracelets. During that Twitter chat, we talked about the importance of doing good deeds, teaching good deeds to your children, um, really New Year's resolutions. Along the way, we talked about the bracelet, but we weren't heavy handed about it. And we certainly didn't say go out and buy the bracelet, but it was kind of natural as part of the Twitter chat that it happened. Mary even joined in, which is amazing. If you think about it, she's somewhere in her 60s, right? And she joined in her first ever Twitter chat. And her pal, Rosie O'Donnell, when she thought that Rosie was in, the, when um, Mary was in the Twitter chat, she joined too. So hugely successful Twitter chat. 
Final tally, what were our results? Amazing, 53 million impressions, okay? 53 million impressions in just a little over a week. We secured 90 blog posts, untold tweets, Facebook status updates. During the campaign, I felt like I couldn't go to Facebook without seeing a bracelet, right? And we heard from the 100 Good Deeds folks that sales were out the roof. This was a period between Christmas and New Year's, which for them is usually a very slow sales time, but people were visiting their site and sales were mega happening, so a major increase in sales. So you might ask, wow, 53 million impressions, 90 blog posts, what'd that cost you? Um, some bracelets? Honestly, we gifted bracelets. We got our friends at those other networks to join forces with us because they believed in it. We took the time to share the story with them, but, and we definitely knew it was important to gift anybody who was writing about it a bracelet because they had to feel, touch, experience the bracelet and wear it to really understand it. But basically our total cost was sweat equity elbow grease. Here's my team and remember I said we launched the campaign between Christmas and New Year's, right? That time is usually hibernation time at agencies, not at ours, no. We had to comment on every Facebook post, we had to retweet every tweet, we had to respond, we had to reply, we were there, we just kept the momentum going so that the conversation of doing good deeds was loud and noisy. So a few takeaways. Um, one, doing good deeds really does make a difference. But from a rallying of bloggers around a cause perspective, what made this campaign successful was more than a beautiful bracelet. What made it successful was the concept deed a day. And the truth is, Mary, the designer, doesn't own the concept. I don't own the concept. The people who shared it own the concept. The people who shared it decided they wanted to do a day to day. So when rallying bloggers around your issue or cause, make sure the message is natural to the sharer and it's not all about you. So with that, I'd like to say thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing your 15 minutes with me during the Outreach Marketing Summit, sponsored by my friends at Group High. Um, if you want to know more about the D to Day, the Good Deed bracelet, you can go to 100 Good Deeds God. Org. If you want to know more about me or my agency, um, visit Danica. I'm at everywhereagency.com.